Well, hello there, friends. Another fantastic soup today, one you requested a lot, Manhattan Clam Charter. Our New England Clam Charter was a great success, so everybody wanted us to make the Manhattan. The Manhattan is more of a broth-like, tomato broth, and we also show you how to make a clam juice from scratch with fresh clams and white wine. Delicious. Friends, I hope you like it. Remember, thumbs up if you like it. If you do, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to ring the bell. Stay tuned, friends. We're making it together right now. Okay, friends. Well, we made a New England clam chowder, which was a great success. It's a nice, creamy uh, clam chowder. And now we're making a Manhattan clam chowder, which is tomatoey. And, uh, and so we're going to get going. Before I make a clam chowder, I like to make a clam juice. Now, you can buy clam juice. By the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cook the clams. I'm going to show you about it. But I'm going to start them a bath. I am going to start the, the clam a bath. They're going to take a bath. So I'm, got, I'm putting some big onion in there. I cut them, I got a whole onion, just cut big. Meaning, uh, uh, in, in just big slices, because I'm not gonna use those onion. I'm just using them to flavor their bath. <laughs> so let's talk about the clams. Uh, those are uh, uh, quite a good size clams. They're not too big, not too small. And uh, uh, they have been uh, uh, in this bucket where in the bottom of it, I have a little bit of uh, uh, cornmeal and uh, sea salt. And, uh, and the purpose of this is to, to hope that the, some of them are gonna open and, uh, and they're gonna go, they're gonna release some of their sand and they're gonna go for, uh, for, for the cornmeal. And uh, you know, maybe it's a wife's stand, but my mom did it, my grandmother did it, everybody that I work with did it. So, and we did it at the restaurant and uh, I can't guarantee it's gonna work. <laughs> but no matter what, we're gonna, they've been in there for a day now, cold water, right? I'm gonna drain them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drain them and uh, wash a little bit of the cornmeal out because they were full of cornmeal. And we're gonna, we're gonna get them ready. So, you know, this is really, this is really their last meal. The clams, that is. <laughs> so we got to do it nice, you know. If I was a clam, I would like to be with a French chef on my last meal. I give him wine. That's what I'm going to do, friends. So I'm going to give him a bath of wine. <laughs> with a little fresh thyme. Like I said, you can buy clam juice. You don't have to do any of this. But my clam juice is going to be special. And you can make it too, friends. It's not that big of a deal, right? Uh, so I got thyme, I got garlic, I got onion, right? And then we're gonna take a bottle of Chardonnay. Mouse well, is your last meal now. You gotta be nice to them, eh? And here you go. Give them all this. Don't be afraid. Let them drink it. It's three quarter of a bottle of Chardonnay. Now give them a good wine now. Remember that's gonna be our that's gonna be our clam juice. And now we're gonna put our clams in there, friends. And then we're gonna steam them. And then when they cook, we're going to take them out and I'm going to show you what we're going to do to them. I may have a little too many. Well, let's see, I'm going to put as much as I can in these pots. And, uh, and the rest of it, I'll cook them later on for dinner. So, you know, I, I tell you what, every, every grocery store, at least in Fort Lauderdale, friends, has clam, yes, fish store, I go to the fish peddler in commercial in Bayview in Fort Lauderdale, everybody got clam, eh? So it's not difficult to find them. I think it's gonna be too many. So I cook the other one later on tonight. I gotta give him room to open, right? So that's gonna come to boil and we're gonna steam them. Boom, that's it, all right? So this is gonna take a little while, but, and then I'm gonna show you we're gonna drain them and, uh, and we're gonna get rid of the sand. I'm gonna strain them Later on, I'll show you. So I'm going to move him aside, and now we're going to make the soup, okay? So the soup, friends, I got a half a pound of bacon right there. And you see, look, the bacon has, uh, releases his fat. Remember, when you do the bacon, friends, you do it slowly, very, very slowly you do it. 
Otherwise, you, what, what happens is you burn the lean part before the fat has time to render. So take your time, no rush, okay? So I got the fire. You can see the fire right there, right, Jack? Can they see it? So now, now I got a whole onion, but dice small, because now everything is going to be... Uh, everything is going to be in the soup. It's going to stay in there, friends, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to saute the onion. We're going to caramelize them. We're going to wait for the clams to open. That's, this is going to take a little while, right? The onion needs to caramelize. The, um, the clams needs to open. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do all this. We're going to wait for a few minutes. And then when we come back, we'll put a whole thing together, friends, okay? It'll be, I'll explain to you about all the ingredients. Remember, I have my mise en place, very important, very important. We have the mise en place, which means we have everything ready so we can relax and, uh, and, and enjoy the cooking process. So, so it's not just cooking so we feed the kids. It's cooking because we're having fun. Remember what I say? If you're not having fun in the kitchen, you're not doing it right. If you're scrambling everywhere, you're not doing it right. You're supposed to have fun. Best way to have fun? Have your mise en place ready. Have all your bowls ready. Everything dice, chop. I, you know what? I'm going to say it in every video because it's really important, friends. All right? So we'll be back in a minute uh, when, the, when the onion is nicely caramelized and the clams have opened. I'm going to show you what I do, okay? Be back in a minute. Okay, friends. A few of them are already open, and when they open, they're good. See, look, 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 they're beautiful. When they open like that, you take them out, friends. Take them out. And make sure you collect that liquor, that juice right there, friends. Because not only do we have clam juice, not only do we have clam juice, friends, but we have the the the, bah, the wine in there. <laughs> so here's how I'm going to do it, friends, okay? I'm going to continue doing all this. You see, they're opening up. And if they don't open now, don't, don't force them. Let them open. Okay? Don't, 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 don't force them open. Let them open by themselves. But they look like they're all open. Normally they open at the same time. When one of them or two start open, keep an eye on it because they're all going to open. There's no reason to overcook them. No reason to overcook them because they become tough. I like it better if I don't overcook them. So here's what I'm going to do, friends. I'm going to give those guys a little more time to open. This guy's not, this one not, 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 no, 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 no. Okay, all right, I'm gonna cover those. I'm gonna give those guys just a little bit more time to open. I'm gonna get that hot, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, friends, they're all good now, you see? They all, usually they, they, they pop about the same time. You know, it could take 15 minutes, 20 minutes to open. Depends, okay? It just depends. Now, if those guys don't open in a few seconds from now, I'm not gonna worry about it. Friends, let's get with the soup. You good right there with the camera, Jack? So let's get with the soup, friends. Okay, so if in a second they don't open, I think I turned it off by mistake. All right, so now, it smells amazing. As you can see, obviously, our onion have, uh, have uh, nicely uh, caramelized. Now what we're going to do, friends, we're going to put the garlic, and we're going to put the, a little bit of tomato paste. And we're going to cook that tomato paste for a minute or so to get some caramelization, a little bit of the, uh, of the tomato paste. You'll smell it when you cook your tomato paste like this. For a while, you smell, it smells beautiful. All right, let's see, clams, if it doesn't open, I'm throwing them away. Oh yeah, they did, look at them, ah, they knew better. <laughs> there you go, all right? So now friends, what we need to do now, we need to strain that juice. So what I do, you're gonna be ready right there for Jack for me? I forgot to tell Jack what I'm doing next. So look, the, uh, the tomato paste is really, really caramelizing it. Smelling, smelling amazing, friends. It really is smelling amazing. I'm telling you, I'm gonna put uh, fresh thyme. I got uh, one and a half tablespoon of fresh thyme. And I got a couple of teaspoons of tarragon. Because you know I love tarragon. You don't have to put it in if you don't want tarragon. Don't worry. It's still gonna be good without it. But it, tarragon gives a nice little 
anise, je ne sais quoi flavor. I got a, a cup and a half of celery. You notice know how beautifully cut, everything is beautifully cut. The, the carrots, you know, I use my carrots. Will they remind you? Remember, we have that video where I show you how to cut them correctly, right? It's no big, not difficult. Okay, we smell the garlic. So when we smell the garlic, what do we do, friends? We have to put liquid. I got a big can of tomato, peeled uh, uh, tomatoes, then I squished, squished. It's a new culinary term, friends. A squished. <laughs> right? And, um, and I know some of you are wondering, what is this color thing over there? Right there. <laughs> it's a purple carrots. Now, how do they do it? I don't know. But when it, whenever there is something like this, like a purple carrots, friends, I go for it. See, that's what it looks like. You go, what? I'm not going to buy this. They taste amazing. And look, they look pretty. You know, since we're going to see everything in here, let's do it. You know, if you can find it, if you can't find it, don't put a regular carrots in there, okay? Nicely sliced. Okay, I got some uh, Nouvelle potatoes also. Those are all gonna take about the same amount of time to cook. The little Nouvelle potato, you know, the wax potatoes, same deal, right? And now we're gonna put some uh, chicken stock on top of this. All right? Chicken stock on top of this. How much I put in? This is a 12 ounce ladle. I am doing, uh, I would say five, five. All right, so 60 ounces of, uh, of uh, chicken stock. You don't want to use chicken stock, you can use clam juice. You can use a vegetable stock, you can use a seafood stock. All this is all good. So now friends, that I can relax for a second, I'm gonna show you about for the clam juice, okay? So now, for this, you need a very fine mesh strainer in, 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 uh, in a commercial kitchen, we call that a chinois. And, uh, and that's the name of it, of it, that's the term of it. And uh, uh, it means the Chinaman. So uh, I don't know why, but it is what it is. And it's a very, very fine mesh, triple mesh. If you don't have one of those, those are great for sauces. You know, one of those get a, a regular strainer, you know, one of them very fine strainer, very fine one. Where are they? You know what I'm talking about, right, friends? Look, very fine strainer. Now, it's not as fine as the Chinois, but this is also very fine, okay? It's like triple mesh, double mesh. This is like quadruple mesh, which means it's going to help us catch the sand. Uh, but if there's a lot of sand, it may not be very successful at it. So here's what I do, friends. The, um, the clams right now, we're gonna take them out, and most of them, we're gonna keep a few of them for decoration, we're gonna take them, and we're gonna cut them in little pieces. Now, if you like the whole clam in your, so in your soup, you don't cut them, but I like to cut them up in two or three pieces, and we'll add them at the end because they cooked already, right? So some of them are really, really big, friends, you see? And the, and the big one, I mean, if you like the whole clam like that, leave it whole. I like to chop it up, but I can keep a few of them for decoration. You'll see we'll do a nice decoration at the end. It's really up to you. So now what do we do with the broth? Right here, we take that broth right there, friends, and we're going to put it through the strainer. Okay, you're going to have this, Jack, you think? All right, now don't worry about what you put in there because all of the solid is going to be... Uh, it's going to stay in a strainer, friends. That's why I'm not afraid. <laughs> but I'm never afraid. <laughs> and then when I take, I take a ladle and I squeeze. I squeeze. See, look, look, look when you squeeze. Look, you see how much you get? I squeeze my garlic and my onion. And then they smell beautiful. Right? So now, what I do, friends, I take this out of there. And... You know, I don't have another container, so let me just take a pot, friends. I'll do it just to show you so you get the concept. What we're going to do now, we're going to go back, and we're going to put this in here. And we're going to be very careful, friends, to make sure there's no sand in the bottom of it. See, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. And you probably, probably can't see because the camera 
there's no half that good of an angle, but there's a little bit of sand in there. Very little. Very little sand. So I'll tell you what I do. I go like this. I rinse this with hot water, preferably, but it doesn't matter because we're going to rinse it all. Right? Now, if I had another one, it would have been more professional, but here we go. And now what we do, friends, we do it again. You see, we do it again. Now, remember that, that, that clam juice, that's normally what you buy. Except, trust me, it don't take half, it don't taste half as good as this. This is going to be like gold. So you go in, and again, you go slowly, and you see no sand. No sand, no. I'll show you a trick. How do you know there's no sand? You take a ladle, a clean ladle, right? And you go in the bottom of the pot. You go in the bottom of the pot. And if you have sand, you, you'll hear it. Perfect. All right, so here it is, friends. Liquid gold. This is amazing. This is what we're going to put in here. We're going to strain it all. I'm going to do it one more time off the camera. I'm going to strain whatever juice I got here. See, look, look, I got all that juice here, friends. I'm going to strain all this. I'm going to cut up uh, uh, most of them, but I'm going to keep a few that I use for decoration. We're going to let this cook. I come back when the whole thing is ready to be served. Be back in a minute, friends. Okay, friends. I chopped them up and, uh, and put them in there to reheat. And uh, I had about a cup and a half of it, you know, it depends how many you cook. And, uh, and the stock, I mean, the, the clam juice, uh, I ended up uh, straining it, uh, three cups, I ended up with three cups of it. When you make it, you're going to look at it, it's going to look greenish. And, and Jack said, well, we're having prison food again. <laughs> and uh, it looks greenish. Uh, it's not very attractive, but you, you put, the minute you put it in here, you'll never know. It's in there, and every time you make a clam juice, it's going to be that kind of color a little bit. Now, the clam juice you buy in the, in the bottle is transparent. I don't know what, what, what kind of clam they get in there or how do they clarify it. It doesn't matter. I, I, I don't mind the color of it because, look, right here, it looks beautiful, right? So now it's a little thin. You can certainly leave it like that. There'll be nothing wrong with it. I saved a few of the clams that I'm going to put in here right now just to get hot, and I'm just going to use them as decoration. You know, you do you, do you. I, I do me, and you do you, whatever you want to do it. You can use it like that. It's really up to you, friends. But if you notice, it's a little thin. It's a little thin, and let's look at it together, okay? If you look at it, you see, it's a little thin, friends. So, as we know, the texture, the conductor of flavors, and we like it to make it a little thicker. So you can take a little, oh, oh, I forgot to tell you. Then I forgot. <laughs> I forgot to tell you that I forgot. Ha. Leave it up to me, right? I hope we're going to forget something. I forgot to put the cayenne paper. Now be careful with cayenne, friends, okay? Because cayenne is like holy mackerel -y. Okay? Cayenne is, is really like holy moly. You got to be careful. So you know what you do? You take a, a spoon, one of them little spoon over here. That's too much. Uh, <laughs> I got them somewhere, there you go, them spoon. See right there? I want a little one. There you go, a little one. A quarter teaspoon of cayenne. About a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. Put as much as you want, okay? Uh, but be careful. You can't go out there and just shake it up because you'll ruin the whole thing, friends. So, so be careful with cayenne. Cayenne is wonderful if it's in the background and it's overwhelming if it's in the foreground. Meaning if you test it right away, then you... You have uh, like, ha, but you know, some people like it very hot. I mean, some people like it hot. I think there's a song, some like it hot, some. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not gonna sing. Eh? He's like, Jack is going, oh God, he's gonna sing. No, no, no I'm not. So look guys, uh, bring it to boiler. And uh, uh, I'm using a tapioca powder today. You can use corn, corn starch, arrowroot. Uh, if, if you have a cooked roux, it would go well in here, okay? And, uh, but I know a lot of you don't do that, so I put a little cornstarch in, a little arrow root, and, uh, and that's going to change the texture. How much? It's up to you. You may just like it without it. It's up to you. Okay, I like it just with a little thicker, a little bit. That's really something, friends, you have to do yourself. There's, nobody can teach you. See, look, it just got a little thicker. You can hardly tell. 
you know, I kind of know it because I just did it. And <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing I know it, right? Look at this. Look, look at the beautiful. Oh, let me do it here so you guys can see. I, 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 hold on. I don't move the plate no more, guys. Can they see it now? Can we see it? Oh, you see? I was moving the plate the wrong way as usual, right? So look, guys. All right? So at this point, you want to clean your plates. Okay? And what I do, all right, I do, friends, I grab a, a couple of, of the uh, of the one that I saved, and I put them in there. However you put them in there, it really doesn't matter. It's really up to you how you want to put them in there. All right, you can put one or two or three or, or 17 of them, however you want, my friends. And let me tell you something, friends. This is a clam charter. Manhattan clam charter. It's a beauty. It's a beauty, it's a beauty, it's a beauty. I'm going to put a little bit of parsley right there. And we have ourselves a beautiful bowl of Manhattan. I love to say that word. I probably don't say it right. <laughs> clam charter. And here it is. I've been testing it all along. <laughs> That's how I knew I forgot the... Uh, the cayenne, but let me tell you, my friends, you know, I like the vegetables, still a little crunchy, not, not, you know, not too, too wimpy, you know, but it's really up to you how you want it, and, uh, and be careful because it's hot. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. Mmm, 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 friends, it's delicious. I hope you make it. Remember also to watch uh, the uh, New England clam chowder. Jack is going to give you a link. And, you know, it brings me to something important, friends, is uh, uh, a lot of people send me a, a comment and say, do, do you have a recipe for this? Do you have a recipe for duck? Do you have a recipe for, for filet mignon? Uh, how do we do this? And, and it's like, yeah, it's on the channel. But that's because you don't know how to use it. So here's what you do, friends. You go to the YouTube search bar and you type Chef Jean-Pierre Duck, Chef Jean-Pierre Chicken Milanese, whatever it is you're looking for. And you'll find it right away, friend. Just use that search bar. YouTube is an amazing tool. It's amazing, isn't it? And you can see whatever you want, whenever you want it. It's really great. It's a new thing. <laughs> it's a new thing. It's actually not that new, but it's kind of new for me. Friends, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Remember, give us a thumbs up. And don't forget to ring the bell. Thanks for watching, friends. Wow, this is a delicious soup, Jack. And it's not a prison food, okay? First of all, I think it looks like a million, million bucks. Don't you think it looks like a million bucks? Thank you very much. See? <laughs> all right, friends. We are good to go, buddy. Let's do it. Let's eat, because I'm hungry. It's a perfect soup.